Jesús. Good evening, everybody. It's your boy, Mike Black, the co-host of Impact in Life 247. So we're changing things up tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and be hosting tonight, and uh, we're going to bring you a special interview with your host, Mr. C.L. King. He's going to bring to us tonight uh, talking about his book, and I'm going to ask him a series of questions, and we'll just go through those questions. But uh, one thing I like to say about Mr. C.L. is his setup is so professional, and I just dig that he's got all these books, the uh, knowledge behind him. He calls it his cathedral of resources. My man has just coined so many phrases that are smoother than the other side of the pillow. Let me tell you folks out there, he is a smooth cat. He's a smooth operator. And that's how I like to roll because I'm just as smooth as him when I want to be. But uh, I just love him to death. And I'm so glad he's invited me to do this tonight. So bear with us because I'm co-hosting. There's bound to be some technical difficulties. So just bear with us in advance. And we thank you for that. And uh, so without further ado, I'd like you to put your hands together and welcome my man, Mr. C.L. King. What's welcome, up, Mike C.L. Black. What's up, Mike Black? How you doing, brother? Doing great, man. Did, doing you like awesome. that Did you like that fade out, bro? I like that fade out. That was sweet. That yeah, was awesome. Man. Yeah, man. We That's how we do, baby. That's how we do up in Impactville. It's so good to see you, man. So glad to be back together. Yeah, man. So glad to be here. And thanks for, uh, you know, reversing the roles here tonight so i get to interview you and uh with, with that we'll just get right into it so question number one that i have for you is and ladies and gentlemen he doesn't know these questions so um so when you were younger did you ever think you would write a book you know black i did not and now that i'm 47 throughout this process i really didn't think i'd finish the book bro as you know, because I'm going to be interviewing you about your book that's coming out, um, it, it is an, it's a task, especially when you've got other things pulling at you. And so as a kid, I was just I was in survival mode, bro. You know, I, I, I didn't get a lot of aspirations until I got to Ruth E. Plowden's house. Uh, up until then, it was just survival mode. So, no, not as a kid. I did not ever envision writing a book. OK. All right. Question number two. Uh, what, uh, what or who inspired you to write a book? Well, you should probably know that. And uh, I'm sitting atop of the Ruth E. Plowden legacy chair right here in the high definition studios of impacting life 24 seven. And I forgot Mike that I haven't written the dedication part of the book. You know who the book is dedicated to. Right. And, um, I, you know, I've been wrestling with that because people get offended. You know what I mean? People, people, if if they feel like they've been left out, they get offended. Um, but obviously, the the main genesis behind this is Ruth E. Plowden. She gotcha. opened up her home to eighty six kids, Mike. And so, the motivation to write this book is in honor of her. But then there's a second motivation. Okay. Remember, you and I talked about this. You have pictures of your childhood that are going to be in your book, which is coming out shortly. We're both kind of racing to the finish line on our books. Right. You've got pictures of your of your growing up years, Mike. You got pictures of being with family and and special occasions. And and Mike, I have only three pictures in my possession of my childhood. Wow. Three pictures. One with my grandmother on the church steps. And two with my dad uh, in, in a church somewhere and a restaurant. And so I, I don't know about my family lineage and legacy and heritage. I don't, I don't know anything about my dad's dad. I don't even know where who his dad was. Right. right. And so, uh, you know, on the other side of my family, I know that there's a lot of them. But I never lived, I hardly ever lived and interacted with those people. So I don't even know the other side of my family, the king side. So the second motivation is for my children to know what their dad went through for us to get to where we are today. You know, they got they they didn't they don't know a lot of it. They hear me talk about it, but they don't know the struggle 
and the real pain that that I went through. And so it's going to be good for them and their children and their children's children to know that hey man, you know, our our, our we came out of the 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 crucible of struggle. We came from the we were boiling and roiling in adversity. And I want that's what I want my kids to know. I pass this on to them, brother, and it will live in infamy long after I'm gone. That's amazing, man. You know, one thing that uh, occurred to me while you were talking is about uh, sharing about not having very many pictures. I, I didn't know that, but I find it interesting that um, that you always want to take a picture and you always want to record something. And so I think there's something to that, but that is just special and it shows the impact that she had on you and that you have impacted others in your family and you're always taking pictures and taking them out and wanting to do things with them. So I find that to be very special and I find that to be an interesting parallel you know, to your upbringing and childhood, to how you're raised as an adult, you know, you're always taking pictures, you're always doing things with your kids. And, and those of you that don't know him, I mean, this man is just dedicated father, husband, so loving, so caring. I mean, I can't say enough about him. And he's always wanting me to take a picture. And when we're together, and I'm always like, can we just create a memory? And then he takes a picture anyways, and then he posts on <laughs> Facebook. And I get home and I'm like, I didn't even know I was there, you know. <laughs> uh, and, but, you know, interestingly enough, Black, I am back in my closet. I right. probably have I probably have five to seven to 10,000 pictures. Uh, I bet you since, do. Since I've been married. I bet and, you do. Uh, with raising these kids, as you know, back back in the days we didn't have digital photography so right everything so then, was everything was either the cheap old spin thing you know yeah the I mean? disposable ones you had to yeah, take man. down and get them developed the kids don't know nothing about this today you had to take it there they get developed and wait for it and you're like Whoa, the pictures are here yeah <laughs> and so we we i it was important for me um to capture those moments brother like birthdays and christmases oh, and yeah. all, all of those things that it was so important because you know, sometimes, sometimes even your kids forget. Yeah, you know when they get true. mad at you or they get twisted with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they then you forget. whip out the baby pictures and be like, "Yo, you know I changed your diapers, right?" That's right. That's right. You know, I taught you how to tie your shoes and eat with a spoon, right? Black. You know, you know what I'm saying? Now think about it. <laughs> we took care of our children, right, in their most vulnerable state. Sure, sure. We we got them through their most vulnerable time, and so right. when we get old. And, and and the sun starts setting on us. It really is supposed to be a reciprocation. Our kids are supposed to take care of us in their most vulnerable time. And so that's why I have all these pictures because I just want, it's a reminder. When they go through them after Charity and I pass away and they're looking at all these memories, they will remember, man, we had a great childhood. Dad wasn't perfect. Mom wasn't perfect. But, man, we tried to not duplicate what I went through as a kid. That's right. That's right. Awesome, man. Um, the next question I have for you is, uh, what types of challenges have you faced in writing the book? I'm a procrastinator. You are a procrastinator. I feel like I feel like I'm better at the two minute drill. You know, I'm 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 the master of the last minute. If it wasn't mm. for the last minute, I might not get nothing done. Right. <laughs> So, so that's challenging, right? And let me challenge you that has it taught you to be more, I don't want to use the word diligent because I know you're diligent, but has it taught you to be more methodical, maybe more, you know, intentional, well, just, you know, slow and steady type deal? Well, you, you're right, Black. That's, that's, um, that's, I think that's your methodology, which is why your book was, is so successful, at, you know, getting to where it's at. Um, you were a major inspiration to me because you kind of gently, nudged me along the way when i hear you saying i'm at 60 pages and i'm at this and i'm thinking my goodness okay let me get on the stick okay um, but i will say this also that when you take on a challenge like writing a book okay major life events still happen right <laughs> right? right life still and goes on right Life still goes on and we had some major life events that affected my psyche you know what I'm saying? In addition to writing the book, sometimes sure. I I, t I had to put the book down because I I've caught myself reliving those those moments I was describing in the book. Oh, I got you. You see I what I'm you. saying? I so see what you're saying. There was a couple. There was a couple. You know, dichotomies or wars going on within me, and then to compound that, uh, you know what I mean? I'm always like, oh, I can get it done. Oh, I can get it done. Oh, I can get it done. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We were supposed to have the book in print by 724. 
we but were. I did, but I did finish the manuscript by seven twenty three. So okay. I'm like, okay, you know, I I did I I didn't get all the way to where I wanted to, but there it it's important to set a goal. Right. I believe that writing a book is um it takes on its own personality. Like right. some people can, you know, write a chapter a day. Some people can write a couple words. It, it is really based on your personality, your inspiration and your desire to get it done. Uh, some people take three, four, five years to get their book done. Remember, I just started writing in January, bro. In January. OK. Yeah. So you're talking seven months and we're done and- with the manuscript. Well, but you think uh, my book, I started writing my book at the tail end of uh, 2021. Well, actually January 2021. So I've been writing it a little bit longer than you. So maybe that's why I've kind of seemed like I was ahead of you. But um, I was reading something that said that autobiographies are one of the tougher books, you know, to write. So out the gate, you know, we're writing autobiography or you would call it a memoir. But I think it's more of an autobiography that you're writing, you know, from your childhood on up. Um, but they say those are the most challenging books to write. What? So like what what's most challenging? The autobiographies yeah, and or yeah, memoirs. Yeah. So they are the most challenging books to write because, you know, like you said, you're reliving some of those memories and it was it should be cathartic. But it was also, like you said, bringing up some of those hurtful things that have happened. And, and you know, you've had to deal with it emotionally. You know, um, the thing about it is black that I, I put it down. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I would put the book down for three weeks, four weeks at a time. Okay. And it really, that was helpful. Okay. You take know, a break I mean? from it. That right. Was, that was helpful. It's just like if a writer gets writer's block, if they're trying to create fictional stories or something like that. Sure. I never had writer's block. I knew everywhere I was going because I was just, I was just recanting the experiences. Right. Right. But, but the motivation to be diligent, to do the work, it is work. It, it I mean, is work. work, bro. It is work. Yeah. Cause you know, when you're writing it, like, you know, uh, you want to be a perfectionist, but at the same token, you want it to be authentic and real. So I get what you're saying. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, next question I have is, um, let's see, what have you learned about yourself in the process of writing this book? And like you said, you just a procrastinator. So probably yeah, I, is I've there learned, anything additional that you've learned? Yeah. Well, what I've learned is, that there's room for me to grow. Okay. Right? So in other words, the mechanics and the the methodology required to put a work like this together is different than the mechanics of going and giving a speech. Mm. Two entirely different things. Right. Like if somebody, you know, usually if I get an invitation to come somewhere and speak, I immediately you know, obviously pray and go into deep thought about what they want me to deliver. Right. So I'm marinating and ruminating on this topic. If it could be months in advance, mm. and then as you see the night when I gave Chris's uh, um, keynote speech at his graduation, if you remember, I did not print the speech out until the night of, you remember that? Yes. And I remember thinking this is crazy, but I mean, I didn't doubt you. But I'm, you're like, and I don't know if you were half joking, because I remember that vividly, that, uh, yes, I stayed the night, so I'm going to crack on myself, but um, I didn't bring my onesie or anything like that. That's but, right, you know, no onesie. That's, that, that's my brother, and so I'm staying like my brother, so ain't nothing weird about it. But I remember saying, are you are you done with that, Chris? And he says, oh, I'm going to write it in, tonight. And I'm like, did you even start it? <laughs> you were like, <laughs> no. And I was like, I was freaking out for you. I'm like, yeah. well, it's tomorrow. What do you mean? I'm I know, like, but see, the crazy I'm thing like, is, the I'm crazy like, thing is, Black, that was okay. in, it was in my heart for four months. Sure, no, I get that, but, so, but I would have had to have that on paper, and I would have had to write it sixteen <laughs> times and scripted it, and been in the bathroom practicing in the mirror. Let me count the ways. I'd be like, it ain't no way, dog. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't yeah. no way. Well, see, and that's uh, the difference because, like, for me, speaking is just as as natural and easy, and it's I, I can't I can't describe how much exhilaration and endorphins I get when I'm allowed to speak in front of people. But sure. I also, I, it's, it's become my process of how I deliver a speech. You know what I mean? Like I don't type it out or write it until the, either the day of or the night before, because I want it to be so, I want it to be so fresh that even I haven't seen it. You know what I'm saying? 
Wow. And it, it's just a, a thing. But writing a book, you can't take that approach, Doc. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't take that approach like, well, I'm just going to. Because what happens is time passes. If you set a deadline, as you see, we missed the completion deadline. And, and it, it just taught me that, I, you know, there's more work for me to do. I've got a second book in my spirit. It's a more, right. it's a more of a leadership book. And, okay. And uh, that book is going to be more, it's going to require more method, met, met, a more methodical approach uh, because we're going to interview people and we're going to get, you know, get statements from folks. And okay. so it's going to be more work and I've got to be more diligent and, and have a strategy more than just sometimes just winging it. Sure. I got you. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, okay. What, what would you like to share with the audience uh, about writing a book, the good, the bad, the ugly? The good is man, that you're going to have something and it gives you the capacity, Mike, to impact a generation that has yet to be born. Oh, that you can affect that generation from the grave. Wow. Long after the brother, that's powerful. Ain't it? <laughs> I feel goosebumps even right now. <laughs> Long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. When you write that, when that literature, when that literary work that you, that you birthed, it will be on the shelf for your children's 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 children. Mm. Long after you're gone. I think about the book that I, that I, try to get you to read, but you refuse to read it. The life of the bee that book affects me. And he wrote it back in the 1800s, bro. Mm. Um, and it, just, it, 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 it like, it takes me to where he's speaking. So the good is you'll be able to, to affect people from long after you're gone. The bad, the bad is that people are going to judge you. Mm. And you have been sequestered in this nest of creativity. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's good, Black, right? Did you take that from the Life of the Beast book? No, I'm brother, just I just, just, that's, I'm just saying, man. You know, sequestered. Sequestered. <laughs> in, you know what I mean? So, and, and, and you, oh, have man. Been, you have been wrestling with yourself about what to put, what not to put. I mean, you know, I've got some pretty uh, vivid and uh descriptive things that happened to me right mm -hmm. so so i had to find a way to not have a book full of vile you know what i mean like this is parental guidance only you know what i mean so oh, yeah. I, I had to really dress some things up with, right. but by still telling the story well the bad is now i got to open myself up to editors mm. When the book's finished, people are going to cr criticize. I didn't think it was going to be this. I, I thought it was going to be about, you know what I mean? Right. And then the ugly is, is unfortunately, what I'm writing about black. Is right. My, it's my story, right? Right. And some of the people are still living. Right. Now, some some have challenged me and warned me saying, hey, man, maybe you need to put this off. But I'm just like, I've put it off for 47 years. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think now is the time. You know, I don't I don't I didn't write that book, Mike, to to sit up on some top of high hill and throw stones at people. Right. Because, you know, if truth be told, I wasn't I wasn't the greatest parent either. I didn't do the stuff that was done to me, to my kids, but I could have probably did a whole lot of things better. And so the ugly is, is that there are going to be people alive who were the perpetrators of these events that are going to read it. And there's nothing that I can do about that, man. Uh, when you write a book like this, just like Nisi, you know, her book's behind me. Uh, right. You know, behind closed doors. She, she's telling a story of something that, was very very painful you know being assaulted by family members is it's very painful and then for them to still be alive you know that's going to create some sort of uncomfortable situation sure i got you thanks for sharing that um so what advice would you give others on writing a book 
here's what I'm finding. And I think you I think you see this too, Black. Especially now that we're down at the finish line. Right. That there is a multitude of things that you can do that people say is right and wrong, right? With your book. Right. You know what I mean? Like, should you publish it yourself? Should you not publish it? You know, all all of these things. And what what I would challenge people is I enjoy the because I'm kind of a control freak, right? <laughs> I enjoy the control that I have of this process. You okay. know what I mean? I, I'm not, I didn't just write it and then turn it over to somebody and they, they put it all together in a fancy bow. No, I'm, I'm walking this thing all the way to the finish line. It, but some people that may not be, that may not be their mojo. That may not be their gift. So you've got to find, you know, th- there's 10,000 ways that people say, here's how you write a book. But I'm also finding that there's 10,000 other ways that people say, no, you don't write it like that. You write it like this. Mm. Right. So right. really what what the truth of the matter is, when I look at all these books behind me, they all have a different format. OK, you know, they're not all, they're not following, you know, in college, you got the APA and the MLA format. Right. Right. Like all these people wrote wrote, you know, according to the format that they wanted to uh, produce. And so don't get so hung up. That's what I would say to people. Don't get so hung up on, you know, did I write it in the right format or did I have the right spacing or did I put the pictures in the right man? Write the book, right? Write the book and you're going to find. And and I went to a training with a gentleman who said this for those of you who are speakers or those of you coaches, all that kind of stuff, man. When you finish that book, it's not just about you getting paid millions of dollars for the book. Right. But that thing is going to open up doors for you that you otherwise would not have been able to walk through. Uh, you know? Yeah. Like like you black, you know, you're you're a coach and a and a teacher and a trainer and a philosopher and when you have that book, that like gives you a a different credibility than someone that doesn't. That guy said that he wrote a book and he he applied to be a speaker at some sort of Goodyear conference with a bunch of executives, right? Well, I guess other other speakers had applied for that gig, and they chose him only because he had a book. Wow! And then when he went to you know meet with them and work out the particulars, he said, "So, what did you think of the book?" They said, "Oh, we didn't even read it. We just <laughs> we just we just figured anybody who's written a book." Uh, has has got some credibility and the other speakers didn't have it. So you got it. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's what I would it. say, man. We get ready for the doors to open. I'm believing that I'm believing that we're going to be able to obviously sell thousands of books and, and put these in people's hands. But I'm but but I'm also saying that I'm looking forward to the additional doors opening because I want to reach so many people black. And uh, if if my my first ambition is not money. Right. My first ambition is impact. Right. Now you can have both. I think they can walk in parallel. Sure, I, sure. I don't want to live broke. <laughs> I want you well, know what I mean? but at the same token, let's just say, and you mentioned that you got another book idea. Um, you get inspired to want to write another book. Uh, I'd like to just add that when you're writing a book, it costs money. It does. It, it, it costs money to do things. It does. So, so you know what I'm saying? Think about this. You know, you make some money. And you flip some money, you'll have the money to write another book, and you right. won't have to be stressing about, well, how much does this cost to edit? How much does that cost to edit? Yeah, yeah, what about yeah. this? And, and you know, we've been able to do things very uh, frugal in a frugal manner, both of us, because we're yeah. doing it at the same time. But the same token, I mean, we ain't got no big time dollars to be dropping ten grand on some hopty topty fancy, you know, whatever, right. and have them. You know, we don't have that kind of funds, man. So, and, that, and that's and that's why, um, you, you know. That's why when we say to people, okay, here's some lessons learned. Right. Um, don't get yourself trapped up in all these commercial, you know, scams that are on sure. the internet. You know what I mean? Because everybody's sure. talking a good game. You know, right. it, it trips me out, man. Like these people offer free classes on the internet, right? Oh, come to my master class. It's free, right? Right. But there's always an ulterior motive. There's always oh, uh, like they're trying to sell, trying yeah, to sell you something. Yeah, they'll finish the class and then they're like, "Well, if you want to go to the next level, you know." And I've stopped doing that in my classes, man. I'm like, if I offer you a free class, then I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna sell you nothing in the back. 
I got if I you. you a, if I offer you a free class, I'm not going to sell you nothing. If I offer you a paid class, obviously there's levels to that. Right. You know, so yeah, I would just tell people, I would just tell people, man, to, to follow your heart, you know, obviously communicate. We're blessed, Mike, because we got two authors on our staff. So we can can bounce stuff off of them. And we do. And and we do, you know, we, we had a a ad hoc meeting uh, on Sunday to talk about various things. And so, you know, now that we're down to the wire, now we got to start shelling out some cash to get the book completely authentic. And, and that's right. what you're going to have to realize if you're doing it on a shoestring budget, just be, just be advised that at the end, if you're self publishing, there's some funds that you're going to have to definitely come up with. Definitely. Well, Chris, you answered all the questions and it was like questions I had, because again, I didn't give him the questions in advance people. And he just answered questions that I had written. So that's how just in tune we are. But the last question I had, I guess, is that, and you touched on it, but just rehash how important it is to have your support system, not just, you know, Mike Black pushing you, but who else has been kind of supporting you and motivating you along the way, whether it's family and, and like you said, life happens. So just touch, uh, you know, end on that. Cause we're at three minutes over, but oh, that's it, just, okay. it, it didn't we, even feel like we went three minutes. I over. know, man. I think we, we started late anyway, so we're good. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we got, we're, we're fine. Uh, but you, you're, you're right. Relative to the support system. Uh, you know, I, I, I really just need to thank our sponsors because many of our sponsors, um, we collaborate on other things and they'll just drop a message, man. They'll drop a message to me saying, Hey, look, you got it. Keep going. If I post a clip or something about the book, they're like, they're very, very encouraging. And these are people from all across the country. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're people that are pursuing their own ambitions and they always stop and, uh, you know, give me a motivation. Stephanie Eccles tune reminds me of, of, um, every day she sends me a scripture and she, she had my book, um, publishing date on her calendar. And she reached out to me and had said, Hey, where are you on this? Right. It's like, wow, people, people, people really do care about this journey. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and of course my wife, um, she, she understands and she saw the behind the scenes wrestling. Right. You know what I mean? She got to see, everybody sees me here, the motivator, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. But she, but she got to see the anguish and the emotional side and helped me through that. You know, sometimes you don't need to necessarily talk to someone just to let them know, Hey, look, I'm here for you. And I understand what you're going through, you know? Right. Yeah. That's so, so important. So the support system has been multifaceted. Of course, you know, Greg, he, he, the brother sends me messages almost every morning, calls me an author. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> what, what I'm looking forward to Mike, I got, I'll be honest with you. I got a little emotional when I finished that last chapter mm. because it's like, okay, I'm done with this. I, there's nothing else to write, you know? Right. And it's like, wow, you know, the sense of accomplishment just at that point, I can't right. imagine what it's like when I'm holding that thing in my hand and and it says C.L. King on it, bro. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? That's something, and, and yours, that right. it's something that nobody will be able to take away from us, man. That's inspiring. Yep. I feel the same way, man. That's awesome, man. Uh, well, that's that's the interview for tonight. You've been an excellent uh, guest, and I've been an excellent co-host. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been a you've been a great co-host, Black. You know the thing about thanks, it, man. The thing about it is, ladies and gentlemen, is that we didn't we didn't plan this until today. <laughs> um, Black is a more methodical person than I am far yes. more methodical and he's far more deliberate and strategic than I am which helps me because he helps me in crisis time to really just calm down and assess things you know I am like the guy that wants to run into the fire and and you know whatever but but Mike is more calculated which which helps me to be you know I glean from him and then what I, in return, what I try to pour into him is spontaneity. You know what I mean? So I tell him, hey, look, Black, I asked him today. I said, are you busy? I want you to co-host the show. And look how, what a magnificent job he did. 
Um, this is why he and Greg are my closest confidants and friends um, because I can call on them at any time. Just this past Sunday, these guys were on Sunday afternoon break and even the whole staff, right? I said, I need some answers. I put it in our communication tool and everybody started responding. So, man, we're blessed, bro. I'm so thankful for you, Black. I'm looking forward to interviewing you about your book. Just send me your questions and I'll just re-ask them to you. <laughs> so yes, have, yes so please, because because you'll be throwing me some curveballs. Yeah, you know, you know, I'll you know, be you know. like, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, what kind of questions are these, man? What? Uh, can you tell us the forensics of the philosophy of chapter number two? And I'd be like, man, I was throwing you softballs and you're over here throwing me 100 mile an hour fastballs. I don't know what's coming at me. Oh, Lordy. Oh, man. So Danny and I are getting together. And that's something that you got to do, Mike. We'll, we'll talk about that. But we're getting, a, uh, we're putting together. I already purchased um, whoatemybrownie.com. Yes. So I own that domain. We're going to make a, a, a landing page. Uh, Danny and I are going to work on that tomorrow where that's the page that people can go to to buy the book, but also where they can continue to connect with me uh, through our podcast or through, you know, our mailing list. We, you know, we're putting things together like that, being a part of our leadership group, whatever. And so that's another element that has to be with your book to be effective. And so I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to getting that done with Danny tomorrow. And uh, that's something that you got to do too, Black. Your book is called, what's the title of your book? The Journey of One Tortoise. The Journey of One Tortoise. And it's interesting because we're both writing autobiographies. And both of our uh, autobiographies have, you know, they're like diametrically opposed, right? Right. But, yes, very much so. But there's nothing like being able to put on paper the story of your lifetime. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's hardships or whether it's great things, I believe both of our books are going to inspire multitudes of people, brother. I believe so too. Absolutely, man. Um, so it's been great. It's been a great time tonight. Enjoyed spending this 39 minutes with you. Actually, we got on at 630. So um, no, we didn't. We got on. Oh, we got on at six thirty to try to work out the bugs. Yes, we were having some technical difficulties. We but, had uh, to restart our computers. <laughs> Still, we couldn't go live tonight. Something's wrong there. It's right. Just like, but you know what? You should have seen us when we first started, right, Black? <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a train wreck, man. And you still got those archives. I, wish I, still, go yeah, I still got them, man. You got them, you got them in a safe somewhere, like, Dude, bunkered man. away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're hosted on Podbean. Podbean carries us. But my first my first uh, platform that carried us was called Messy.fm. Mm. <laughs> That's sounded, exactly like, what, sounded like some adult site, bro. I mean, that's exactly what it was. Messy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> it was messy, man. Yeah, man. So <laughs> I'll get this uploaded, man. So it'll be on it'll be online here in just a few minutes. Uh, but thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mike Black. Thank you to our whole team. I'm so excited to get this book done. Thanks for giving me an interview, Mike. And uh, we'll do the same for you. We'll reverse the roles. Okay, brother? Okay, man. All right. Y'all have, have a great night. Have a blessed night, everybody. Bye-bye.